guys, it's Bastion time, and welcome to Zelda News. I'm your host, Bastion. Let's get on to that first story, which is about a family over in Japan who have changed their crest, their family crest, to the Triforce. Now, you might be familiar with the fact that in Japan, each family does have a crest, um, sort of similar to, like, um, medieval England. Actually, I guess in England, maybe you guys still do have family crests. Um, in any case, over in Japan, for whatever reason, uh, this uh, family decided that they no longer cared for their uh, current family crest, so a guy decided to choose the Three Triangles crest. Uh, which is interesting, because it, it sounds like he didn't specifically, he wasn't like a Zelda fan out to show his family Zelda love or anything like that because this crest already existed as a family crest for a different family. Not sure how the other family feels about him sort of co-opting their family crest. If you happen to uh, be visiting Disneyland or were near Disneyland this past week, you might have seen this amazing new piece of official art for the Wind Waker Wii U. It's the very first one uh, that we've seen lately. Um, Besides what they showed us at uh, the Nintendo Direct uh, quite a while ago, um, it looks really nice. Our next story is about an adorable 11-year-old cosplayer who decided to take one of the most difficult characters to cosplay, Navi, and uh, first of all, possibly one of the most annoying characters in all of Zelda fandom, and then made her adorable and entertaining and stylish. Uh, her costume is awesome. It has like a slightly punk aesthetic to it. It's really good. Um, she She's definitely on to something there. I can't wait to see what new sort of cosplay concept she comes up with next. For those Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D fans out there, I'm sure you already knew about this, but why didn't you tell me? Apparently, in Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, there's a reference to the very first Zelda game. Uh, when you go to buy some items from Cranky Kong, uh, one of the items when you select it, I think it's the barrel, he says, it's dangerous to go alone, buy this. Take this, buy this, close enough. Pretty awesome. You might remember that like last year, about a whole year or so ago, there were two Zelda sets up for consideration with LEGO. LEGO has this program called Cusco or Cusco, uh, where fans can submit their designs of what they think uh, Lego, a new Lego set should be like, and then they have to get enough supporters, basically enough votes, and then that's sent on to Lego for consideration. Um, Lego turned down those previous two Zelda uh, fan-made sets because they felt, they said that they felt it required too many new pieces. Really what they're looking for in a new set is stuff that they can use pre-existing pieces for. Uh, too many new pieces is too high of a cost of production and it makes them, it not cost effective for them in case the sets don't sell basically. So uh, those two sets aren't going to happen. So two new sets are up, one of which seems to be by somebody who totally gets that idea. It's a King of Red Lions sort of set, and it doesn't look like it uses hardly any new pieces at all. So that might actually make it if uh, LEGO and Nintendo can come to an agreement. The other one, however, looks even more specific and more individualized. All, all, basically 100% brand new pieces, so I really don't think this particular set is going to make it, unfortunately. Um, but anyways, uh, I would have loved Zelda Lego sets when I was a kid. I actually um, did play Zelda with my Legos when I was a little kid. I used the green forest, like, I guess he was supposed to be like Robin Hood or the Archer guy. And uh, yeah, it was pretty awesome. But I would have loved an actual Zelda Lego set. That would have been cool. But anyways, that's it for this episode of Zelda News. See you guys tomorrow for Nintendo News. Bye, guys.